So I hope that this has sort of set the basic context of what we're talking about when it comes to the difference between SND1 and XND2. However, given the conditionalities involved, sometimes it's quite easy to get confused and lost, which is the reason what we've done or what we suggest is that rather than stopping here at a theoretical discussion or at a, at a theoretical level, let's try and see if we can set up an Excel spreadsheet that allows us to numerically walk through values for both ND1 and ND2. And when we have these values, we can then try and see that if we look at the relative changes in both values over a period of time or a set of values or a set of prices for the underlying, what kind of intuition can we build that would allow us to better understand the difference between ND1 and ND2? So when I go and build this model in Excel, I have to make a number of assumptions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a Monte Carlo simulator in Excel that will simulate the underlying stock price. It will also simulate the Black-Scholes equation and it will also simulate the results of this analysis. For the model to work, I have to go out and define a handful of formulas. So the first